Often when you see a new patient in clinic, they'll also present to you a huge pile of x-rays and they expect you to absorb all that information and still have time to treat them. Of course, that's not possible, but what it is possible is to scan the x-rays and see what the salient, really important points are. And that's what I wanna do for you here, particularly in the neck, because it's really crucial with old x-rays, even if they're 20 years old, will give you vital information as to what's going on for that patient. Now, if we look at this x-ray here, generally this neck is not too bad. If we look down the front here, well, you know, there's no real osteophytes that we can see here, no real long-term generation. Also, the disc space here between each of the vertebrae, again, is pretty good. Showing a little bit of wear here on some of them, but generally, this is okay. The spaces are good in terms of that respect. So in there, not too bad. Now, one of the things I would say about this neck, though, and something that I always look at in terms of physical x-ray, is what are we like with this lordosis? How much of this curve have we got? Now, in this one, I would say we've lost a little bit of the curve. Now, it's not disastrous, but it is something to look for. And certainly, you need to see whether they're obviously in a neutral position, which they've taken this x-ray in here, whether they're in flex or extended would obviously influence that. But here in this neutral position, I would like to see a little bit more lordosis in here. And it's borderline to suggest that they've had a whiplash or some kind of trauma in the neck. And so that's something to really look out for. What you'll see with the whiplash is often, even if this has been 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you'll see that loss of lordosis and you'll see this becoming quite a straight line. And I think that's something that's happened here with this person, although I say it's not extreme. So that's one thing to look at, the whole curve. Now, the other thing to look at is at certain areas, often down in this lower neck, you'll find that little bit of that step. It's not so much a spondylolisthesis, but there's just a localized curve through there, localized trauma that again suggests trauma in the past days, not past days, sorry, past years. So looking at this curve, this AP curve is really important. And again, looking up here at this C1, so this is C1, C2, obviously the occiput here, looking at this whole area is important. And in particular, you want to look at this gap. What's the gap here between the C1 and the C2 spinous process? And what is the gap here between the occiput and the C1? And they should be roughly equal. And if we look at this here, that gap there is roughly the same as that gap. So in this neck, that's good. Now, what you'll find is if this gap is reduced or this gap is reduced, then there may be an issue. Now, what is happening here? So obviously if we take that C1 and we drop that C1 into extension, then it's gonna close down this gap in this section here. But obviously, equally, if that C2 moves into flexion, again, it's going to close down the gap. And the same thing can happen, happen here with the occiput and the C1. So you can have a shift of this occiput, and it's going to influence what's happening here in terms of this gap. And given the importance of the C2, the C1, and the occiput in terms of neck pain and headaches, it's an area to pay particular attention to. And if you see those gaps are not equal, then hone in on that area and start focusing some treatment in that area. Now, of course, we want to be a holistic. You want to just focus on that neck. You know, If there's an issue going on in here and it's been going on for some time, then you know it's going to be influencing the C7, T1. It will influence the thoracolumbar junction and for sure it's going to influence that lumbar sacral junction. So you want to be balancing out your treatment between those different areas. And of course, you correlate with what you're finding on the x-rays or any other scans that you have with what the symptoms of the patient has. If the patient isn't complaining of any a pain or problem in this upper complex area, even if these areas are reduced, then yes, you bring it of note, but you bring it into that whole picture in terms of what the patient is presenting with. So just a short, quick video. Hopefully that will help you out a little bit with your x-rays. Of course, there's lots more you could look at. You could look at bone density, all sorts of different things that are going on in the neck. Bone density here is pretty good. You know, there's detailed stuff that you can go into, but in terms of a scan, that's a nice way to start and to see where you are with the patient. If you'd like more videos that will help you with your patients, then check out these two playlists. One is on treating adults and the other one is on treating babies. And to make sure you don't miss out on any of the new videos that we'll publish here on this channel, just click on the owl to subscribe.